Okay. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are still allowing participant, uh, participants to join our meeting. I muted all participants so we do not hear background noise. Uh, apologies, we are two, three minutes late to start. Uh, but while admitting other participants, I guess we are ready to start. So we would like to welcome all of you uh, and thank you for joining us on Thursday morning for this uh, webinar. Uh, we will have a lot of external guests uh, joining us uh, today. Um, so my name is Povina Good and I uh, do represent Covenant of Mayors Europe Capacity Building Strand and together with my colleague Christian Galeta, we will be hosting uh, this uh, webinar together with colleagues uh, from Sinea. Uh, just to uh, go briefly through the agenda which you all received, uh, we will uh, start with uh, presenting a policy context behind uh, this program uh, with our guest from DG Ener Vasil Stoinov, and then we will move to presentations by Sinea. We will have uh, three presentations. We will have an outline and presentation of the program by uh, Beatrice Coda. Then we will see the eligibility uh, for this program and planned calls for proposals for 2023 uh, by Gianluca Ferreri. And then also we will see a selected uh, project uh, from last year, from 2022, which will be presented by Paul Grandeur. And um, also very happy to join um, a beneficiary, uh, to welcome beneficiary of this program who is joining us also today and who will uh, present the project, uh, the project Gorlitz Kozelec, uh, and it's Sasha Karan. Um, so this is a very brief outline of the agenda. At the end, we will also have a room for questions and answer and for interaction between the participants and, um, and our speakers. Um, yes, I am muting uh, participants. And uh, speaking of this, our housekeeping rules, uh, it's a kind request to keep your microphones muted so we do not hear the background noise. Um, and we invite you to post your questions, should you have any, uh, on the chat box uh, in a written form. You can also raise your hand. Um, uh, you can also raise your hand and then we will give you a floor during the Q&A. So after all the presentations. Um, also, we would like to remind you uh, that this webinar is recorded and it will be available also on the Covenant of Mayors library and also in the cinema, uh, cinea, not in the cinema, in the cinea YouTube uh, channel. Uh, so, uh, should you not uh, give a, con a consent, uh, you can uh, switch off the camera. Otherwise, uh, we are inviting everyone, uh, I mean, uh, to keep your camera on because it's always nicer to see your faces and to see uh, who is joining us uh, for uh, meeting, uh, for this webinar. So, if you have such opportunity, please keep your um, camera on. Uh, so I would like to warmly welcome all the speakers uh, once again, and I will give the floor uh, um, first to uh, Vasil Stoinov to start. Um, and before, before uh, just yes. quick uh, thing, before going through the webinar, um, this webinar will be recorded. So uh, just uh, know this we, for GDPR reasons, we need to uh, make sure that you also uh, have been uh, warned uh, before uh, starting the recording. So we'll start the recording now. Perfect. Great, thank you, Christian. And I will I will give a uh, floor uh, to uh, Vasil Stoinov. Yes. Good morning, Polina. Thank you very much, and good morning to all the colleagues which joined us uh, today at this webinar. It's my pleasure to be presenting you the first slides, which are concerning the context of the discussion that we're going to have today. My name is Vasil Stoinov and I work in uh, European Commission, Director General for Energy in the unit on renewable energy. And I'm also one of the officers responsible for the implementation of uh, the Connecting Europe Facility Program and its window on cross-border renewable energy projects. 
Um, I can start with the first slide. <clears throat> I'm going to use the abbreviation CBRES, which stands for Cross Border Renewable Energy Project. This is a special type of project which are supported by the Connect Interior Facility and which are <clears throat> at the core of our presentation today. The relevance of the CB REST projects comes uh, mostly from the context of the European Green Deal. You all have heard about uh, this policy initiative by the Commission. This is the um, key initiative which was published already in the summer of 2021 with the ambition to make Europe the first climate neutral continent and to make the EU uh, net zero uh, union by 2050. This means that Together with the European Green Deal as a policy objective, the Commission has proposed a set of policy initiatives, legislative initiatives, which should contribute to achieving this objective. For our purposes today, the most important initiative is the objective to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions in the EU by at least 55% by the year 2030. This is achieved through various measures, holistic measures from all sectors of the economy, but one very strategic measure of this package is the strong support and the increased ambition for renewable energy. Next slide, please. The next initiative, which is uh, very relevant, again, uh, in the context of renewables, is the Repower EU initiative, which Presents, represents a roadmap to reduce the dependence on fossil fuels, in particular coming from Russia, and to speed up the energy transition. It is based on three pillars, and you can see that one of these pillars is renewable energy. So with those two slides, I want to say that for all key initiatives in the EU today, renewables represent a key uh, strategic, a very important pillar, and this creates the need to boost the deployment of renewables and to make renewables as much as possible. It's clear that the ambition that the, both the European Green Deal and Repower EU sets is uh, very high on the verge of the potential for renewable generation in Europe, which means that all possibilities for tapping into the into the potential for renewable energy have to be used. One of those unused potential instruments is the cooperation between countries, whereby two member states or member states in a third country join the efforts together and set up a project or another type of cooperation mechanism like statistical transfer or a joint support scheme. And by doing so, they get access to renewable potential and to um, theoretically more renewable energy generation than compared to what they could do on national level. So this is what the cross-border renewable energy projects are about. They are about tapping further into the potential of renewable energy in the EU by putting the efforts of member states together and working collectively to also achieve the collective objectives. On the next slide, I'm going to, um, to present you a couple of, of details. I'm going to give you also some numbers. European Green Deal proposal from July 2021 increased the EU target for renewable energy to 40%. Now, last year in May 2022, the Repower EU proposal increased this target further to 45%. The final um, number of the target will be, decide, will be decided very soon because now the co-legislators, the Council and the Parliament are discussing um, the proposal by the Commission, but the target will be somewhere in the range between 40 and 45 percent. This means huge amount of additional renewable energy capacity. I'm going to present you a couple of numbers. In May last year, the Commission, together with the new proposal for 45 percent target, proposed a solar strategy, which sets the goal to put online 320 gigawatt of solar photovoltaic capacity by 2025 and almost 600 gigawatts by 2030. These numbers may seem, might seem outrageous, but the results that we got from 2022 show that it was a record year for renewable energy deployment. In terms of solar photovoltaic, almost 41 gigawatts additional capacity will were installed. This is almost 
50% more than the additional capacity in 2021. This marked a complete uh, record in the installation uh, in the solar industry. The forecast of the industry itself is that they're going to reach 85 um, gigawatts additional capacity in 2026. In addition to the photovoltaics, in terms of onshore and offshore, offshore wind, again, very high numbers, almost uh, 16 gigawatts of additional wind capacity were installed in 2022. Again, almost 45% more than what was installed in 2021. Hydrogen also plays a very important role, green hydrogen produced by, by renewables. So by those examples, I want to show you that the policy context of the cross-border renewable projects is that they contribute significantly to the very high ambition for deployment of renewables and the cross-border renewable energy projects represent a very promising and very um, important avenue and they reflect an instrument which has not been implemented fully so far. So what we want to do as Commission is to support those projects. The rapid rollout of um, those projects will contribute to our objective to replace almost 50 uh, billions of cubic meters of gas imports and the cross-border renewable energy projects have their place in this um, uh, in this in the achievement of this objective. How do we propose to support those projects? First, we do so by uh, the legislation that we proposed. So the renewable energy directive will have an obligation by the member states to implement cooperation agreements to work together on joint projects. So this will not be any more uh, completely voluntary. Um, uh, option for the member states, there will be some level of obligation. Again, I cannot tell you what exactly because this will be part of uh, the decision by the co-legislators. But first, those projects will be uh, enhanced and those projects will be incentivized by the legislation itself. Secondly, we also provide support through the Connecting Europe facility. This is a funding program which is uh, historically devoted to infrastructure and now since 2021 it has a dedicated window only on projects which are based on cooperation, meaning more than two countries working together, and the core of those projects is renewable energy generation. More about it, uh, it will be explained by uh, my colleagues in Cinea, so I want to conclude here. I want to make sure that you understand our policy objective is to achieve the ambitious targets in the European Green Deal and Repower EU cross-border cooperation is an untapped potential for deployment of renewables, and what we want as Commission to do is to explore this potential and to make sure that cross-border cooperation mechanisms emerge bottom up and we do this by supporting those projects through the Connecting Hero facility and also through our legislation. Thank you very much. I pass the floor now to the next speaker, Beatrice. Thanks. Yes, Thank then I start uh, immediately. Thanks, Vasilio, for, uh, for the introduction. And uh, from my side, uh, a very good morning. And uh, from, from Cinea, I think we are also really pleased to be here with you today to make a step forward in, uh, in reaching out uh, to cities through the Covenant of Mayor. Uh, cities, as we know, um, play a huge role in the, you know, in the Green Deal, in the realization, in the energy transition. And uh, and therefore we are here today really to contribute, let's say, to to, to this process um, by presenting uh, this new this new instrument, the Connecting Europe Facility Cross Border Renewable Energy Projects. As Vasil said, uh, traditionally SEF has financed uh, large scale uh, infrastructure uh, projects in the energy sector, but uh, we will demonstrate and we'll outline to you today how uh, this, uh, this, me this mechanism of cooperation, which is established, let's say, between member states, can indeed also contribute uh, to um, realization, implementation of projects which have a cross-border nature between cities. And uh, the fact that, uh, let's say, not only we will do this by outlining, let's say, the major uh, features of the program, but the fact that we have today also an example of one of the pioneer uh, projects uh, in, uh, in this sense, uh, the, the, the gerlitz Jojelec project, will be, I think, very helpful for, uh, for all the attendants today uh, to explain how this cooperation from member state level 
can be uh, let's say implemented and deployed at uh, also let's say between between cities so this is a short uh, introduction uh, the next slide shows a bit uh, um, if somebody can help you thank you uh, just give me let's say a couple of minutes to introduce you for those who are not familiar with our agency, so the European Climate Infrastructure and Environment Executive Agency. Uh, it, is, it is in fact uh, the agency of the European Commission which uh, contributes to the Green Deal by uh, managing the funding programs which have Green Deal as a main objective. So there are of course a lot of uh, EU funded programs who uh, contribute to, to Green Deal, but CINEA manages, uh, let's say, all those uh, in, let's say, who are uh, what we call the direct management mode. So they are not, let's say, delegated to member states or, uh, let's say, uh, authorities to, 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 to be implemented, but they are, you know, centrally uh, manage and monitor the year, let's say, in, uh, in in Brussels. So here, you in this picture, you see all the all the programs that the agency manages for um, a budget until 2027, uh, foreseen uh, estimated around 58 billion euro. Um, and I want to highlight here some programs who are uh, have a, at the center also do support. To renewable energies so one of them uh, is uh, and you might be already of course familiar with this is of course the uh, horizon europe and in particular energy projects can be financed uh, under the cluster five of climate energy and mobility pillar uh, and then of course also we have a new program which is the innovation fund uh, that um, supports en energy projects which are more mature uh, in terms of level of technology readiness uh, and close, let's say, to um, commercialization level, and that's the Innovation Fund program. Um, we also have, in terms of energy programs, the LIFE program that also closes the gap to market maturity in for energy, sec energy projects, in particular for energy efficiency ones, by supporting, among other things, the technology rollout. And then, Last but not least, I would like to mention also um, uh, the, the just transition mechanism for public sector and loan facility pillar and the, the renew, renewable energy financing mechanism, which is a, a, a mechanism which is financed by member states uh, to support projects that are implemented in different member states. Um, and I will present now uh, more in detail, of course, the CEF, the Connecting Euro Facility. I think we can skip this one because I just presented the main the main programs. So the Connecting Europe Facility um, is a program which uh, overall has, um, has a, let's say, a budget until 2027 or 33 billion euro in three sectors. Uh, energy, transport, and digital. So it has a you let's say the, the key is really trans-European, so cross-border. Um, so projects have to have uh, a relevance and an impact uh, beyond, let's say, one, one single member state, but it must have a cross-border dimension. And one of the key objectives of CEF in the three sectors is really to, you know, contribute to uh, the decarbonization uh, commitments in, in Europe. Uh, the next slide shows uh, that, you know, in this configuration, we deal, let's say, with the energy sector um, and we have until uh, 2027 a, a dedicated budget of uh, 5.84 billion euro uh, with the two different windows. So one is the traditional one, so the infrastructure uh, sector, so what we call the projects of common interest, and the second one is indeed the cross-border projects in the field of renewable energy. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we see that uh, in this big uh, CEF program, um, the budget dedicated to the uh, cross-border REST window is up to 15%, of the total CEF energy budget, so 875 million euro, subject to market uptake. And um, well, you can see, let's say that uh, the um, this it, this instrument uh, is uh, the legal basis for the instrument uh, is already the Renewable Energy Directive, which uh, you know outlines uh, the relative relevant provision for member states 
to cooperate in the implementation of um, of renewable energy projects according to different uh, to different cooperation schemes and therefore let's say the support to these cooperation schemes is reflected in um, in the cef uh, in the cef regulation um if we go to the next slide we see what are the let's say the specific objectives of this uh, of this window so as again let's say uh, I will repeat myself here is really the ultimate objective here is to promote cooperation between member states in renewables based on the mechanism or cooperation mechanism which are in the renewable energy directive and we'll go to that in a moment there is also a possibility can you go back please uh, there is also a possibility to cooperate between, uh, to establish a cooperation mechanism between a member state and also third countries. Again, this is subject to uh, some uh, some specific condition and only some specific sector. But that that opportunity is also is also envisaged. Uh, projects uh, which uh, um, can. Uh, you know, can can be re realized uh, are those who, um, of course, you, you know, they the ultimate objective is to uh, make sure that these projects will contribute to the EU target achievement of um, in 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 renewables and therefore contribute to the EU decarbonization strategy. But also, let's say uh, we aim to facilitate rest integration uh also through energy storage and conversion facilities and we will go to that later and also a strategic uptake of innovative and so innovative renewable energy technologies is uh, is considered um how this how this work um these mechanisms of cooperation in cef uh, and how let's say the, the projects can be um, considered uh in the next slide, this uh, process is explained. So, in order, um, let's say, to be eligible for uh, for CEF funding, and CEF funding is given to uh, what we call, uh, let's say, in two different forms. So, it's uh, funding is available for what we call studies. So, it's the preparatory phase of uh, of a project. But funding is also available for works, so it's the real implementation phase of the project. Let me say bluntly, really, the um, yeah the construction phase, so to say. Um, so to be eligible, let's say for calls for works and studies, uh, first uh, a project application must be submitted in what we call uh, application for CBRS status. So a project must receive a status, so a label, so to say, in order to be classified as a cross-border process. And um, so this is subject, let's say, to a formal application uh, and uh, subject, let's say, to checking the speci some specific criteria. And uh, my colleagues will go through these specific criteria and the application process uh, later. Uh, we have now... Um, an application process for uh, uh, to get, let's say, this status um, the, in uh, open, and this will close in the third of May. So the projects which are uh, considered compliant with this criteria and are positively assessed, uh, there will be a publication of this list uh, following a formal uh, commission adoption process. And once, let's say, this publication is, uh, so the adoption and the publication is achieved, then uh, CINEA will launch the calls for funding. So for the CEF, so, so the, let's say, the classical call for proposal for grants, for works and studies. Um, there is also another uh, parallel mechanism. If we can go to the next slide here. Um, which it's uh, outside this status uh, uh, and works and studies process, which I just outlined. And this is what we call preparatory studies. So preparatory studies uh, um, is foreseen also in self-regulation, and that's really a bottom-up process. So um, let's say organizations can submit an application for preparatory studies 
without having uh, received uh, um, the CBS status. And in fact, let's say the objective of these preparatory studies is to provide support uh, on projects in really in the initial phase. So at really projects which are at pre-feasibility, say, so to say. And the idea is to provide support, uh, financial support to overcome obstacles which prevent cooperation projects from going ahead. So, for example, uh, these um, preparatory studies can support costs linked to setting up, let's say, cooperation mechanism, doing the first, let's say, technological surveys or trying, let's say, to establish what are the technologies for, uh, for a specific um, for a specific uh, for a specific project, environmental surveys at initial phase could also be foreseen. So it's really for starting up really the cooperation and uh, projects which are at pre-feasibility phase. And uh, to be confirmed, we expect to launch the next call for preparatory studies uh, in, under CEF in uh, in Q3, so possibly by September 2023. So in a nutshell. Uh, next slide, please. Um, what are, let's say, the eligible projects in uh, under the CBRES? Uh, so they can be based on um, any renewable energy sources as defined in the Renewable Energy Directive, and they can also cover any sectors, so electricity, transport, heating and cooling. Um, as I mentioned, let's say earlier, uh, storage, IT systems, grid connections, um, provided, let's say, that they form an integral part of the project, that they effectively enable the integration of the renewable energy generation and they are ancillary to a renewable generation facility, are also eligible. So, main point here is that, let's say, renewable generation should be, let's say, the core of the project, However, all these ancillary, um, ancillary, uh, uh, let's say, systems can also, let's say, be uh, be part of the project. Um, and that's, uh, let's say, the last point, and that's why it makes it, let's say, also interesting. I think for uh, for cities, is that uh, there is no. Um, in, in, the, in these projects to be eligible, there are no predefined capacity thresholds, locations or technology type. So CEF could finance in principle a small project um, in terms of capacity or also, let's say, a very, a very big one. So depending on uh, depending on the scale of the project, um, let's say, and provided other requirements are met, um, everything is possible in terms of capacity. Uh, the next slide. Um, some points of attention here. So, and this will be, let's say, further outlined in uh, in the slides of my colleagues. Uh, so, the cross-border nature of a project may or may not be physical, and uh, we need uh, generally, let's say, projects in order to be eligible need also a cooperation agreement. Uh, which might be harder to set up than the technical part of the project. And that's, I think, where my colleagues will provide you some uh, also additional uh, tips and tricks. So if you cities are uh, wanting, let's say, to, uh, you know, embark on, uh, on, on, on a cooperation, um, on, a, on, a, on a CBS project, and you have already, let's say, idea of a project between two or more cities, uh, we suggest, let's say, to to work uh, to to, es to establish, let's say, a mechanism of work with member states in order uh, with your member state in order to get this cooperation agreement. And I think this concludes my my presentation. Um, and I'm so if the next slide. Uh, yes, yes, it's for Gianluca to to take over. Thank you very uh, th much. Thank you very much. Be before we move forward, I would like to just update the slides. So one second from my side, and then we will be uh, continuing. Yes, uh, place, good, just a second. Yes, it's just loading. Just one second, please. 
Mm -hmm. Great. And then we go to the presentation uh, here. Yes, uh, Gianluca, I think you can check uh, whether you have a control over slides because you should be able to have it. OK, otherwise uh, we will assist you. Good morning. No, I think I don't. I'm still in guest okay. mode, but okay. I will ask you to, to go okay. through. Yeah, thank yes. you, Polina. Good morning, everyone. Uh, also on my side, very happy to be there and have a good uh, audience from cities around Europe. Um, I will go a little bit on in the, in the details without uh, too much because then uh, if you're interested in the program, we have plenty of material in for days and uh, really details PowerPoint, but uh, a little bit more to for you to understand uh, what it is uh, about. So what are the projects eligible for financing? Uh, it, it is really about a cross-border project, but uh, the first question you may have is it indeed, uh, is it a physical uh, cross-border project or or not in the sense that is it it has to cross the border physically or not uh, well both are possible so you can have physical projects uh, that are crossing the border between for example two cities uh, uh, on one side or the other and Sasha will show also an example uh, uh, from uh, from the first uh, city city uh, city level CBRS project uh, later on so and but you can also have uh, individual projects that have no physical uh, border impact but are based on the cooperation mechanism uh, as well so these are also also possible. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we will see a little bit uh, more uh, the details. So, uh, on the general criteria of the of to get the status. So we are talking about the cooperation agreement. Uh, this is the first, uh, so to say, pillar of the project. Uh, and then when you go, when you go at uh, the level of the status, uh, well, basically, um, it will be important to show uh, cost, savings, cost savings and benefits in comparison to a similar project that would be implemented without the cooperation. So the, the reason here is uh, to show that the cooperation has an added value and basically the project that you are able to develop thanks to the cooperation. So for example, cooperating across the border between two bordering cities, it's uh, it's a more efficient uh, project, reaching out uh, uh, better uh, better results uh, in terms of uh, CO2 emission, for example, uh, uh, cuts in terms of uh, new capacity for renewable energy installation, in terms of costs in general. So uh, your project in uh, with cooperation is uh, is better off uh, than without the cooperation, and. Um, in a way, um, uh, yeah, the overall benefit outweighs the cost. So this is really the main uh, aspect and element of the of what you call the CBA uh, analysis. But I'll come to that a little bit in a moment. So for the proof of for the cooperation, uh, for the status goal, we ask uh, basically uh, a expression of willingness to cooperate. So it doesn't have to be a fully fledged cooperation agreement between two member states, for example, uh, or, or even a subnational level where it has competencies in the, in the, in the domain, uh, but it has to show um, the willingness to cooperate and to come up at some point to the signature of a, of a fully fledged cooperation agreement. There is no specific format. Uh, so uh, really up to up to the different uh, situations to come up with a format. We do have a proposal like, you know, sort of template, but it's not in no way mandatory, uh, but has to be signed uh, therefore uh, by the competent authority. Usually in energy matter is the ministries uh, level or the member state level, but we know that uh, uh, there are also cases where for example, land in Germany may have uh, an important role or in other member states where region uh, level has important role there. Uh, so we can uh, we accept also signature at this level provided that there is a proof of competency in the domain. Now, if we go to the CBA uh, I was touching upon, uh, it is based on a methodology that is also published in our website, uh, in, in the program website. Uh, so it's the it's a commission staff working document and the slide you will have the link when we will circulate the slide. 
And um, so it, it really details, uh, basically there are seven elements, main elements of the CBA, which includes elements like cost of uh, uh, energy, the, the so-called LCOE, levelized cost of energy, or grid connection uh, cost, or GHG uh, emission reduction, uh, pollutions, uh, um, so these are the type of elements to give you a little bit of an idea, but of course then uh, there's plenty of details in the in the program website to really go deep in in that. And what is important is really this element of uh, uh, of a comparison to a project without the cooperation. So the so-called counterfactual project. You will see it in the, the in methodology and in, in the slide. Uh, if you if you go into the into the um, details later, uh, the counterfactual is is a, is a fictional project in a way. It's a project that you can <clears throat> a similar one that you would carry out without the cooperation. Um, how to be compliant with the selection criteria? So Beatrice was uh, touching upon uh, on that on the, uh, on, uh, early on. I think there are, there's a mic up. Open. If you can try to switch it up. Um, yeah, no. Not yet. I'll stop in a moment because otherwise you don't understand. Yeah, good. Uh, so on the um, the main component is really the energy generation. So the project we are looking to uh, to finance in CBRS project uh, to support with the status. Uh, it is uh, really the core aspect is the new new renewable energy generation. The technology are listed in the renewable energy directive, the so the so called Red Two directive, and it's it's a long list of technologies that you know the that you um, it's very wide. So it goes from solar to wind to geothermal to so uh, basically all the spectrum of the renewable energy uh, possibilities. The additional component as Tichi was underlined, can be part of the project, but they have to really comply with these three aspects. So the integral part of the project, the enabled integration of the renewable, and there are auxiliaries. So it means that basically they provide an, uh, a necessary service to the renewable energy part, and they are, they are not the main part of the project. So this is really important um, to keep in mind. So a couple of examples uh, of what could be these are fictional projects uh, we came out uh, we come with, but uh, you can imagine others. So, but you really to explain you uh, what is important to to have as a key aspect of a civil rest project of, in scenario one, for example, you have a project where you have really the renewable energy generation, and it can be geothermal plant, hydropower, biomass. And important to, to know, it's, it can be, of course, a mix of this. Huh? In the same project, you can have several technology in it. And uh, the example of, of uh, a girl, it will show you um, uh, that as well. So uh, the energy mix in renewables, of course, it's an important aspect to cope with the uh, with, um, yeah, with uh, with uh, the variation in, in in power supply for from a renewable. Um, in the scenario two that you see uh, there, you have a project where you have both renewable energy and the, the uh, a, a part uh, that allows the project to to <coughs> to connect to the grid. Um, and this is also this is also an option. Uh, but it's yeah, typically for example in offshore wind project, you are, you need to have the part of the connection. Uh, integrated in the project, but it's important to keep in mind the three elements I was talking about before on that. And in the next slide, you see a couple of bad examples where you have projects focusing, for example, in scenario three, only on the transmission side uh, or the storage. Um, this is uh, this cannot be uh, supported by uh, the CBRS program, so you can get the status. Um, and then uh, get uh, uh, apply for funding, and also in scenario uh, four where you have a project not at all focusing on renewable part, uh, for example, project purely on carbon procatures, uh, project on CO2 pipelines on uh, on uh, uh, energy retrofitting, for example, energy efficiency retrofitting. These are not part of the CBS. There's plenty of funding out there for that, but uh, it is not what we. Uh, looking for in this type of uh, program, and then a, a little quick reminder on the on the type of calls that uh, Beatrice was touching upon. So in the preparatory study, it is really 
small scale project really like uh, um, studies where you are in the early phase and you need to, for example, gather the necessary data to develop your future cost benefit analysis, for example, or uh, you want to have a little bit of support to help developing on the cooperation mechanism part or both aspects uh, can be uh, can be mixed in the same uh, project uh, preparatory study but there are small projects you will have a couple of examples already in uh, in the approved project uh, in the program and uh, to give you a scale it's uh, around 200,000 to 400,000 euro as a budget uh, this is not a rule uh, but I've just given you the example of the approved one but it's a it's a small project that lasts one or two year maximum to really help you bridge the gap and propose and come up with a, with a, a fully fledged uh, CBS project. So the, the status quo is open uh, until the 3rd of May and uh, as to be confirmed, but we will have uh, towards the end of the year uh, another status quo, <coughs> uh, probably in November uh, this year. And the idea is that we have at least one status quo per year, so you can uh, you can apply. Uh, if you get, uh, if your project gets a status, uh, can then apply for works and studies. So, bigger funding uh, can go from a few millions euro to to several. Uh, uh, you know, we have, we can have project to 20, 30, 40 million euro. So it's uh, to give you really the scale of that. There's no no, no rule of on that, but uh, yeah, to have an idea. And um, once you get the status, you can apply at the first possible uh, call for studies and uh, 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 works, but you can also wait and apply for the, for the following one, etc. So these are the options and you stay in the list unless your project completely changes of nature, uh, of scope, etc. So otherwise you stay in the list during the, the, the program. So I went quickly through the, the points and then maybe I give directly the, the floor to Paul for the for example. Yeah, thank you very much, Gianluca. Good morning to you all. Uh, so I will be briefly presenting you the first projects that were selected during the first uh, the first call last year in 2022. Uh, so if uh, we can see, the, thank you. Uh, so in 2022, uh, we had two preparatory studies that were selected for funding. So these, uh, just as a, sorry, if you could go back before. Uh, so these are uh, preparatory studies which are very early phase projects and they're seeking technical uh, assistance. Uh, then we had three projects that were selected for the civil status and right now the first call for works and studies, so the call uh, where applicants which have the, already the civil status uh, and can obtain funding for works and studies, applied uh, for the first time um, this year and the call closed in February. So just to give you a quick summary of the projects that were selected, uh, if we could see the next slide. So one of the two preparatory studies that was selected was a cross-regional uh, cross district heating project. So here on the map, you can see that the project uh, is located in the, in the border between southern Bavaria and Austria. So it's the region in the in the um, red square here that, that is showing up and you can see that the project is overlapping three euro uh, euro regions um, and then if you can if you go to the next slide the second preparatory studies that was selected was the Gorio project so this is an offshore project in the baltic between estonia and latvia and again a very early stage project uh, which was selected to do uh, tech pre-feasibility studies uh, cost estimation um, calculations to then uh, pursue further on on the on the elaboration of a one gigawatt offshore project so if we go in the next slide, as I said uh, last year, three projects uh, were selected for the CBS status in 2022. Uh, today we're very pleased that Gerlis Gozelex could join us uh, to present their project. So I'll be very quick to, to give them the floor after this short presentation. Uh, and then we also had a hybrid offshore project in the Baltic called Elwind and also Cicerone, which is a cross-border European hydrogen value chain. And this is a project which is across four different member states, 
and encompasses both the production of renewable energy in southern Spain and Italy, its conversion into ammonia, transport to Rotterdam, and then cracking into hydrogen for end-use consumption in Germany. So here, these three projects clearly outline the flexibility and the wide uh, array, uh, the wide array of technologies that can be financed under this uh, under this uh, program, CBLS. So if we go to the next slide, if you're curious to learn more about these three projects that obtain the status, please use your phone and scan this QR code. It will bring you directly to the CBS transparency platform where you can navigate a, a map uh, which will guide you through the three different projects. You can click directly on them and have a technical PDF which will explain the projects more in detail. Um, if we go to the next slide, please. So again, just to recall the timeline uh, of the CBLS program for this year, uh, the applications for the CBLS status open on the 10th of January and are going to close on the 3rd of May. Uh, the, uh, sorry about uh, this typo on the slide, but uh, the CBLS list for 2023 will enter into force between October and November 2023. So those projects will then be able to apply for works and studies in November 23 to be confirmed. And simultaneously in September, we'll have another call uh, for preparatory studies. So again, early stage studies. If we can go to the next slide. So here, uh, additional information for you to have a look at. So quick link to uh, the CBLS program uh, website and uh, also a QR code that will guide you directly to the call page for the current uh, status call, which is open and will, which will close in May 2023. So now I will, um, I will finish my presentation to give the floor to Sasha Karen, who will present you the, the Girl Skorzelex uh, project. Thank you very much. Yes, um, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sascha Caron. I'm working for the German uh, district heating supplier, Stadtwerke Görlitz, and I'm very glad uh, to be here and uh, thank you for this opportunity to present our project and to share our experience with this um, CBRS uh, program. Uh, let's go to the next slide. I want to give you, first of all, a small description of the city. So Görlitz and Skorzelitz are located at the border uh, between German and Poland. Um, both cities have uh, declared, declared themselves 1998 Europe city, and since then they're working closely together. Of course, um, at first it was uh, more like cultural projects or sports events, but now both cities um, want to get a step further in the cooperation and to share their infrastructure. On the next slide, uh, we see the vision of the project. Um, both cities, Görlitz and Skorzelitz, want to supply their citizens uh, until 2030 only with um, district heating, um, which is produced based to 100% on um, renewable energy sources. So for us, it's a um, project that has a very big symbolic character, not only for Görlitz and Skorzelitz, but um, for the European Union, because we have here um, a project where two countries, Germany and Poland, working hand in hand for the environment. And of course, it's in the meaning of the European Green Deal. On the next slide, um, I have uh, brought a map where you can see the actual situation. So you can see the blue lines. It's a river, the border between Germany and Poland. And as you can see, we have on the German side, um, four district heating networks. These networks for the moment are separated. There's no connection pipeline between these networks. Um, in Germany, we produce for the moment uh, district heating based on uh, natural gas with CHP, combined heat and power plants. And um, on the Polish side, we have one district heating network, Groszowa, um, where district heating is produced mainly based on brown coal. They have made in the last month the first modernization um, phases with, with uh, a plant which is uh, uh, powered by natural gas, but still mainly now you have brown coal as a fuel. So the, 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 the target is to connect these district heatings. And if you see uh, on the top of the slide, uh, it makes sense because 
König Suf and on the German side and Groschow are very close by each other. It's only 2.5 kilometers distance between these two networks, uh, even nearer than between uh, König Suf and the rest of the German plan. So that's why we think um, we try to forget the border and to see how it could be uh, more efficient to work together and to collaborate. Um, on the next slides, um, I uh, want to present the for us, the most advantage of this project, um, of course, the first one is uh, the reduction of uh, the emission of CO2 emission. Um, we would, uh, with this project, reduce uh, emission by more than 75,000 tons of CO2 per year. So it's a huge amount. Um, of course, as I said before, the um, symbolic character, the European um, cooperation here, uh, we have made some researches and uh, we couldn't find any project uh, which is similar to this one. Of course, we have some project in the EU where you have connecting pipelines, uh, cross-border pipelines in district heating. Uh, but here we are talking about sharing common generation plans, about um, sharing an infrastructure, and it's based, it, it has to be based to 100% on uh, renewable energy sources. And that's why this project is a, is a bit uh, different as other projects that we have found um, until now. And this would, of course, um, help us to increase the efficiency. Uh, we want to uh, be more efficient in the future and through sharing uh, investment costs, um, sharing the generation plan, it allows us to be more efficient and then it's of course positive for the customer and we hope that it will decrease the heating price uh, for the end customer. On the next slide, uh, now more precisely about the CB REST program because uh, that's why you are taking part uh, to this meeting today. So uh, just our experience, um, we see three main advantage uh, of this program. The first one, of course, financial aspect. Um, we are talking here about uh, investment from approximately 100 million euro. It's a very huge uh, amount for such small companies like we are in small cities. So that's why we need here um, to get financial support in order to to um, be sure that the, the heating prices, that the end price are affordable for the customers. We all know what happens when in this energy crisis, uh, prices